Good morning, beautiful friends. Greetings in the love of Jesus. Ever thought of entering a beauty pageant? Yes? No? I don't think Leah did either. You remember Leah, don't you? We meet her in Genesis chapter 29. And the chapter starts with Jacob arriving to come and live with his uncle Laban. And I think it's almost love at first sight when Jacob sees Leah's younger sister, Rachel. Jacob is determined to marry Rachel. And he works out an agreement with her father that if he works for him for seven years, he would earn the privilege of marrying the lovely Rachel. And the Bible tells us that Rachel truly was lovely. And so for seven years, Jacob works hard, probably harder than he has ever worked before. And then the day he has dreamed of, the day he has toiled and labored for, for seven years, comes to pass. And he marries his bride. It's only the next morning that Jacob discovers all is not as he had hoped or dreamed or had been promised. He wakes up expecting to see his beloved Rachel by his side only to find her older sister, Leah. Now let's stop just right there for a moment. The way the story is written up until now shows Jacob as the one who has been done in, cheated, deceived, drawn the short straw. And all of that is true. But can we take just a minute to look at this from Leah's perspective? Because we shouldn't neglect to notice her heart, her circumstances, or her position. I feel so sorry for Leah. Leah seems to be overlooked by possible suitors. Other men show no interest in Leah. No one, it seems, had come knocking at Leah's door, asking for her hand or offering to work for seven years for the honor of marrying her. Leah was overlooked. Leah was also underestimated by her own father. It appears that the only way that Laban thought Leah would ever get married was through deception. Leah was outshone. By her sister Rachel. The Bible tells us in verse 17 that Rachel was lovely in form and beautiful as opposed to Leah who was not known for her figure or her face but rather for her weak eyes. And as the story unfolds we see that Leah was unloved by her husband. Imagine the morning after the wedding when she saw Jacob look at her and instead of joy, instead of smiling or showing delight at the sight of his bride, She sees something else in Jacob's face. Shock, horror, sadness, disappointment, anger, as he discovers Leah instead of Rachel. Overlooked, underestimated, outshone, unloved, except by God. Genesis chapter 29 verse 31 tells us that when the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he opened her womb, yet Rachel was barren. I love that God saw Leah. He took note of what Leah was going through. He was acutely aware of her situation. Others maybe didn't give her a second glance, but not God. Oh no, God saw Leah. He saw her pain. He noticed her heartache. And then he does something about it. God brings Leah comfort and blessing through the children that she birthed. But God also does something even greater than that. Leah wouldn't have known it, but you and I have the blessing of looking down the halls of time. And so we see something special taking place. You see, Leah was a very special part of God's plan. Two of the greatest tribes of Israel would come from Leah, not Rachel. The Levites, the priestly tribe, they would come from Leah's third son, Levi. And the royal tribe, the tribe that would form part of the messianic line and Jesus' genealogy, they would come from her fourth son, Judah. Isn't that incredible? Unwanted, overlooked, excluded by others, but included in God's incredible plan of salvation for the whole world. Be encouraged today, precious friends. God sees the overlooked, the underestimated, the unlovely and the unloved. And often something beautiful, something special, even something great comes from those very hard and unlikely places. God was up to something then, and he still is today. God bless you.